Hello, hi everyone doing great. So in this session we're gonna discuss about uh, the braking system so which comes under the automobile engineering unit number four where which deals about the steering brakes and the suspension system collaboratively called as uh, the control systems of your automobile. So the the braking system and its types we're gonna discuss. So outline of this uh, the presentation will be the learning objective the outcome uh, introduction about uh, the braking system different types of braking system overview of uh, a mechanical braking system so objective so we need to understand how the braking system has been working so the different types of uh, the braking system so and uh, the uh, the basic principle which has been used in uh, applying the braking force so this we're going to discuss and uh, the outcome will be after discussing all of these uh, different types and the principles we can know how the brakes is being applied in an automobile so, next. introduction so probably we know that the brakes are used in an automobile to stop your vehicle but probably we know that uh, if you have a brake in your vehicle so we could be able to control it more uh, easily because when you are moving at a faster and a higher speed you have a confidence that you have a brakes on your foot so you actually drive to control your vehicles with the help of the brakes so the brakes is converts the kinetic energy into the heat energy by means of the frictional pads or the shoes which has been present in the brakes so when you apply a brake on a rotating wheel due to the frictional materials so the kinetic energy has been converted into the thermal energy or the heat energy this heat energy has to be dissipated in order to have a uh, maximum braking efficiency the principle used would be the leverage the law of leverage by the Archimedes so and the, the Pascal's law for the hydraulics so, so we know that Archimedes law principle where in the lever the force has been multiplied so when you apply your brakes on the foot pedal probably on your two wheeler rear brakes we'd have seen some levers so with the linkages so the brake force is actually been multiplied so this actually with the help of uh, the Archimedean principle so next with the help uh, of uh, the Pascal's law which states that whenever you apply uh, energy in a, in a closed contained fluid the energy will be actually equally distributed without uh, diminishing so that's about actually the Pascal law so which is actually used in the hydraulic brakes so the different types of brakes according to type of brakes so drum brakes and disc brakes according to type of braking system uh, the mechanical brakes hydraulic brakes and pneumatic or called as air brake system so the mechanical brake so it has been operated by the uh, the cable I mean, uh, the cable or uh, the levers to operate your drum brakes or your disc brakes so even in the early 90s I mean in, in uh, early the early 20th century so the disc brakes has been operated with the help of cables so the hydraulic brakes so in hydraulic brakes probably we have both disc and drum brakes as well as in the pneumatic or air brakes will have both disc and the drum brakes. The drum brake. So drum brakes has a higher frictional coefficient. So it means that these uh, brake linings when it has, has a higher frictional coefficient, then uh, we'll have a higher braking efficient. So the components of the drum brakes, so we see these uh, brake linings which could be replaced, the brake shoes, uh, the, the adjusting levers in order to, you have an automatic adjusting lever, so which tends to rotate in order to move your brake shoes away from uh, the contact, because when these linings worn out, so we need, uh, we need not to have some, uh, the lever to be freely moved. So we need some adjustment in the brake levers, I mean sorry, in the, the linings, which is being placed in the, uh, the drum brakes. So I have a wheel cylinder, so for the drum, I mean for the hydraulic brakes. And 
hydraulic fluid gets into the wheel cylinder. So the fluid pushes out the, the piston. So wheel cylinder pushes out the fuse. So these brake lines come in contact with the brake fuse. They will and cause the frictional force. So it actually stops your vehicle. This is a black plate. So where the brake fuse should be mounted. It doesn't actually rotate with your hub. So these are the hub of your vehicle. So the advantage of chrome brakes it's actually cheaper to manufacture so that's what you could have seen on uh, the two wheelers so with uh, lesser than 100 cc on the both front and rear brakes you will have the drums I mean the drum brakes so the material used for the brake lining synthetic armor so which has a higher reflection coefficient as it does in the ceramics so the next is the disc brakes so the disc brake has a more uh, efficient compared to the drum brakes because so it has a better heat distribution in the disc brakes. So we have seen some air ventilation which has been poured among the disc brakes on the circle wheels and we do have some air on the little side, I mean the holes on the little side to have a passage of air that comes in and goes out of your disc brake to take away the thermal or the heat energy which actually increases your braking efficient. So that's why you probably would have seen on uh, the most uh, the car, I mean the low segment vehicles, so where the front brake will be the disc and the rear brake will be the drum brakes because so the drum brakes are cheaper and the disc brakes are not more, I mean slightly costlier than the drum brakes but it is more efficient. The working load actually acts on your uh, the front axle, that's why you have disc brakes uh, for a safety purpose on the front wheel. So, brake fade is less, which means that uh, if you have more heat dissipation, then the fade of your brake will be less. There are different types of uh, the brakes. On uh, the one way would be the opposed piston type, another one would be floating disc type. So we are on the opposed piston type, we'll have the two piston cylinders on the both side of your uh, the disc rotor. So on floating type disc, we'll have only one on your disc brake. Probably you would have seen this type of uh, the disc brakes on your two wheelers. So the component of the disc brakes, so this uh, rotating device called as a rotor, disc rotor for the disc. And these are the the disc brakes so, uh, which has been attached to the shim so this sort of thing attached to the uh, the wheels i mean uh, the uh, cylinder so and this cylinder will have the piston and the piston bolts uh, followed by the piston cell so when the hydraulic fluid gets into the the uh, cylinder body so the piston moves against your shim shim will be moving your uh, the disc patch just been atta actually attached to the shoes. So when it comes in contact with the, the rotating disc, so the candidate is going to be again converted to the thermal energy with the help of these frictional plates. So this thermal energy has been dissipated by the, the winds which has been present in the disc water. Thank you very much. So in the next video, I will try to discuss about uh, the hydraulic brakes and the magic.